Guten Morgen, beautiful, pretty people. Um, old man Vin here. We are doing a thing before the show, so you might have guessed it. Something caught fire and went horribly wrong. Not terribly. Anyway, um, short story long. We get new internet and we are troubleshooting it. Turns out we're going to end up needing a new modem because we have almost gigabit, but um, the device is not exactly up to snuff. That hardware has been ordered. So I'm just saying there's a little bit of crackling and in the video version, there's a little bit of herky jerky. So, but we did learn what the issue was and it's something Jordan might be upgrading on his end as well. So bear with us this week. Hopefully the new hardware will be here by Wednesday and everything will be back to its regular smoldering flame instead of hot mess of fire next week. All right, that's it. Let's go. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. See, uh, I'm saying peace among worlds on the on the slightly different shot. Um, all right, it's going to be a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, to get into it, uh, this week, did you know that GTA 3 had an open source re-implementation of the engine? You might have but it's probably a good time to pick that up. And Rust has officially left early access. And you guessed it, it's still really a hot mess. RPCS3 has some NVIDIA problems, but they were able to fix it by having two people type at the same keyboard. And another UE4 game graces our Linuxy presence. Shame it's another horror adventure. And the dev of a Windows-only early access game breaks down to sales numbers, or lack thereof, and one of the GOG Linux people dodges questions, though he did answer the big one. Mm. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing this nightmare fuel all under Linux, joined by the man in Toronto, where it's like negative 30 because fuck you, that's why. It's snowing and playing with pumps and all the way from Britannia <laughs> by way of a space Hello. Portugal. That is Pedro Mateus, and together with you. Shadow Realm Dynamic joining us in the Discord of Business and IRC, helping us form the last most special bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Um, lads, what's been going on in your lives, man? Uh, Jordan, uh, you other than being cold because Canada? Oh, yeah, no, cold and buried in snow. I did it's, it's always great when you walk outside and like within about five minutes, the fucking Santa Claus beard, because all the snow just binds to your fucking facial hair happens. Oh, that's like a real thing? That's you gotta do it? Um, no, I, uh... Yeah, actually, it it is. It's it's dumb. Um, and also, yeah, I was uh, watching... I, I wrapped uh, Altered Carbon. I enjoyed that. I like me some cyberpunk. I'm glad to see that, like, Netflix is enabling some cool genre shows to, right that on. wouldn't get, like, a mainstream audience. Yeah. What's up, Pedro? I don't, I don't know. And don't over know. here, I've I've basically been uh, stalking all of eBay for that Chromebook. I think I finally found one. Uh, if everything goes to plan, I have some uh, Saturdays I need to work in March, which is fine because extra money means probably I'll finally be able to justify the purchase. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> right on. Um not a whole lot to report. Uh, I think I think it was uh, actually on Wednesday, wasn't it, Pedro? That uh, we've upgraded the interwebs here. You might, oh yes, might have noticed <laughs> that. Yeah, it was because I was a little angry at Charter because we're going to send a technician after six after the show's done, and uh, we're, we're going to give you the ultra uh, all your money. And uh, mm -hmm. then they redid it before the guy showed up, like as soon as I got off the phone with him. So, yeah, we, we don't have seven megabits up. We have 30, which is good. Mm -hmm. And de depending on when I do a speed test, I have between like 500 and 700 down. Yay. Don't really care about the download speed. <laughs> what I do care about is the horse. J-Baby, what's it up to? You shouldn't really, you shouldn't care about the horse, man. The horse is just a worthless sack of meat that we beat week in and week out. And I don't even know why it sticks around. It's the steam. Update of the week. Of the week. Ah. 
All right. Well, some good news a little, a little bit. Uh, there seems to be a bit of Linux growth uh, since the uh, pubginning, as it were. <laughs> Uh, we, we got a 0.15% increase in Linux usership, according to the Steam hardware surveys, um, which, of course, is just garbage statistics because it doesn't actually report the actual numbers that Valve has access to. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, instead, they have the uh, February, the January uh, update for the hardware survey. Uh, we got some uh, we got some 1710 usage on the Ubuntu's. I guess it's a little sad that they're not tracking other distributions. I, I get that they don't have to track every single distribution, but it'd be nice to see like the breakdown for the arches and the fedoras and whatnot. Um, but lo and behold, it's a thing. Um, it's good to see that there is some growth, despite the fact that the massive influx of players from China have completely fucked up all their numbers. Well, China is definitely a thing. I mean, that's something that I noticed uh just by looking through some of the other numbers, man, like simplified Chinese as language is 50% of yep. everything that's there. Back to the Linux, though, 1710 with the Humbuntu's adoptions up, not 0. 0.6 on that. And one thing that I'm sure game developers are actually glad to see is uh, 12 gigs and above for your memory. That's increased over a full percent. While eight gigabytes, which has always been the norm, that's down four percent. So, yeah, I, I think you know, that's one like thing that really surprised me. Sense. Yeah, the big thing that really surprised me was that uh, the Intel Graphics HD four thousand is not in first place anymore. <laughs> It, that was like the reigning champion of all the Steam surveys, and now it's the G GTX ten sixty. I'm guessing it had something to do with the China market because the GTX 960, 750 Ti, 1050 Ti, 950, 1050, and all the other ones basically shot ahead as well. So mm -hmm. apparently China really likes their NVIDIA video cards. Go figure. <laughs> well, that is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what do we get up next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> up next, we have... Well, a little breakdown, a lot of graphs, a lot of numbers. Uh, basically, the developer of um, Cogmind, uh, his name is Josh G. G., however you want to say it. Uh, well, he did a little breakdown of the numbers uh, over the uh, Christmas uh, sale on Steam. And he noted that... During the beginning of the sale, there was an increase of traffic coming into his games page, but the moment that he was featured on the um, on the front page of Steam, it shot up in impressions. But when it came down to actual sales, uh, that didn't really translate. In fact, uh, he has a little graph of the comparison between um, the conversion between um, actual looks at the game page and purchases. And during that time that he was featured on the, uh, on, on the front page of Steam, uh, the conversion of looking or impressions and actual sales was down to not 0.22%, uh, rather than the pre-sale numbers before the sale even started, which was at 3.18% of all impressions about the game. Now, this uh, Cogmind is a Windows-only early access game, so it's not really representative of much, but it is uh, still about... Uh, I guess it's still a good uh, indication that, yes, getting your game featured is a good way to put uh, eyes on it. It's exposure. Exposure can be good, but people also die of exposure. So, I don't know. Honestly, I don't really look at the front page of Steam. I know I'm not alone here. Uh, I don't really look at the front page of Steam anymore. I just go to the Linux thing and sort by release date filter by games and that's what i do i'm just i'm just reeling at your freaking mixed metaphor over there hot damn son people die of exposure <laughs> that that that, hey that, that that gave hey me man. pain that is the Water reason Morton he testicles. is going to end up with a pulitzer prize award of like seriously fuck you um yeah uh, i actively try to avoid the front page of scene i i do 100 percent. but mm -hmm. you know you can't get away from the shovelware even when you sort but this is how you know yeah. <laughs> Lin Linux has made it because every morning there's a fresh bit of shovelware <laughs> sitting there waiting for you. Yep. But 
being on the front page of Steam doesn't guarantee anything. So, uh, it's 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 true because you can you can get you can get the eyeballs, but um, just just because your game is being promoted to however many million people are out on Steam at the moment mm-hmm. doesn't mean that they're gonna necessarily buy it, right? You get you the game actually has to have some appeal, something that will make people go, yeah. "Huh, I'm gonna check this out," and you know. Being an early access game is not great for that. Mm-mm. No, just saying. Mm. <laughs> so uh, AMD and Valve. But hey, indeed. So if you have uh, been watching the show for a while, you know that uh, we've covered many, many, t- well, a couple of times where Valve has actually put some money or hired some people to develop the open source drivers and hopefully improve the state of AMD's drivers on Linux. And they're still doing it. Uh, Pierre Loup Griffet, you may know him as Plagman on Steam or on the uh, Steam for Linux GitHub. Uh, he posted on Twitter he would like to welcome uh, Daniel Schurman Skerman, to the Valve uh, Open Sherman. Source Graphics Group. Sherman, something like that. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 know, I, I, I always uh, call him Pierre Loup Garou, too, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, but, basically, but, Daniel's but, already but, been hard but, at work. Uh, yeah, he has. Uh, he's been making some commits. Uh, the link to the uh, the uh, tweet in the show notes that all this is in that mm-hmm. contains another link to the uh, Mesa uh, get our um, mailing list. Anyways, uh, has this guy supposedly working on some stuff on Rad V? So good to see uh, Valve is putting some uh, actual brain power behind the Rad V development, just because it's it's the little driver that could, right? Um, it sort of oh, yeah. came out of nowhere. They're like, yeah, we're you know what we're we're gonna, we're going to make our own little AMD Vulcan driver that's not going to be beholden to AMD internal politics. And lo and behold, it is what everyone. No, I mean, one hundred percent. I would like if that was a bet, I would have lost it because I. Uh, Valve's kind of forgotten about the AMDs and all that business and uh, the Linux kind of at some point, but what what do you guys think is what I want to ask you is do you think in like 2018, it's going to say by the end of 2018, right? Let's say, let's say December. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to be a legitimately like valid? Cause all right, here's one Jordan. Me and you, both 980s, say maybe mm-hmm. it's upgrade time. Do you think there's the slightest possibility or a good possibility that we can look for an AMD offering after we steal them from miners? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. After, after, <laughs> we, after we uh, get, get the burn through card that we got to stick in the oven to reseed all the solder. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely possible. Um, like I said, I'm really excited for the the prospect of like AMD APU laptops um, because that seems like this would be mm-hmm. the way to go, especially for like better intro gaming machines that you can uh, you know straight up afford because those APUs are really affordable. Um, I don't think until AMD can like straight up come out with something that hardware wise curb checks whatever Nvidia has been thrown down. Um, AMD is going to be a viable option, but definitely if you want to support Team Red, it is becoming a lot more compelling to do so. And definitely by tw- the end of 2018, I'm thinking like in the 416 kernel release time frame, it may very well be that like, yeah, if you if you want like a pain free gaming experience on uh, on the Linuxes with the Wayland support with everything, yeah, just go buy an AMD card, Sla- slap it in there. Yeah, and that's the big thing about having community-developed drivers is you're not dealing with AMD's bullshit in the middle of all this because as someone who used FGLRX for a long, long time, I can tell you for a fact, AMD suck when it comes to uh, driver support or even just general software support on Linux. So having the community basically go at it themselves and say, look, we got Vulkan working and... It's an open source driver, and it works on every single AMD card that's been put out, well, since Radeon SI anyway. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm totally down for that. Indeed. So we're not done talking uh, about um, AMD and or Valve. AMD and Valve. Yeah, it's it's tinfoil <laughs> hat time. So uh, True Audio um, is AMD's uh, directional sound processing framework that they're, they've integrated on their uh, GCN-based uh, AMD AP or uh, GPUs, anyways. Um, so essentially, what it does is it allows for um, inline calculation of 
uh, sound data in addition to the 3D positional image data, which makes sense because you're doing you're already doing this calculate these calculations anyways for like light and ray tracing. Might as well just do it for sound as well. Uh, and so Valve is working with AMD to enhance the Steam VR audio API to uh, take advantage of this. Maybe that's why they hired themselves a Mesa dev so that uh, they can get more <laughs> tight control in the experience of this. If we want, if we want to, sorry, just got to adjust my uh, tempo out here. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah no, this, this is all stuff for uh, binaural audio for, uh, can, yeah, stuff for binaural audio, um, other, um, and, and some echo uh, work as well, because when you're in VR, you kind of want the immersion. It will throw you off. You don't have um, a lot of those little bitty, itty bitty audio pieces in place. I would like to see this being done for non VR games. I would, I genuinely would. Uh, but at this point, I can't really can't help but feel like VR has sort of run out of steam. Pun intended. Uh, if this is all the news that's actually coming out of the VR sphere. True audio, really? Uh, I mean, we we've definitely. I mean, it's it's found it's fun. touched on true audio before. It's a thing, and I understand why it's there, but it it's kind of hard to get really excited about it. But you do get to think, though. It, I mean, it's not a bad idea because yeah, VR will be a thing in probably two to three more generations. It'll get to that point. When that happens, why not have the tools ready to go? So you can just slap on, you know, your hot, sexy glasses and run into traffic accidentally and have the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> audio experience oh, while you're getting the murdered to death. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about that game a little bit later. Uh, just 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 yes. you wait and see. But um, as, as it turns out, people actually use Steam for non-gaming related software. And uh, so one, one, one of our pals, they, uh, they released well, something on Steam. This isn't any of that. No, this is Godot. Godot 3.0 is now available. It is here. You can play with it. Uh, hey, this is a great way to keep it up to date. And it's, it's kind of nice to see that. Everything completely free. There's no aha, got you. Hashtag lead folks. Um, this is the brand new rendering engine. It's brilliant. C sharp 7.0 using bullet 3D for your physics and all the other fun stuff. Uh, hey, it's just come a long way since we first started covering Godot, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, we, we, we uh, talked a bit about the uh, 3.0 release uh, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back and watch mm -hmm. that YouTube video. Give us money on, on the YouTubes. Uh, yeah, my biggest thing is still it needs Vulcan. It just needs Vulcan support. That's it. <laughs> it's 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 coming. They've 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 made their case about that, and it's it's legit. Yeah, but um, I th I think we we got we got another card left in our hand. Oh, yes, we do. So, Hand of Fate 2, in an effort to remain relevant like the first game wasn't, well, they decided to release the uh, Game Master's Toolkit, and um, uh, it isn't actually out just yet at the time of recording. Maybe out by the time you're listening to this, uh, at the time of recording that they say uh, next week's update of Hand of Fate 2 will include the long-requested feature, the Game Master's Toolkit. And Basically, it is exactly what you're thinking. Uh, it will let you create your own campaigns. It will let you create your own cards, your own quests, a uh, bunch of different encounters. It is actually a very, very good um, tool. Uh, it is a bit limited, but then again, if you think about the Hand of Fate, it's a dealer with a deck of cards, and the cards go out on the table to form the levels. So basically, you get to design all of the important bits for your own campaign. Pedro, for this is a horrible idea. Do. This game, what this game needed was paid DLC. None of this creator of <laughs> content, man. <laughs> well, well you, 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 I'm sure you they will release some, some, some DLC. Some, some developers get it, get it in their head. 
<laughs> yeah, so some developers get it in their head that if you enable the community to create a bunch of random content, that maybe one, some of this content will become more popular than the base game itself and will sell more copies of the game. But no, that, that that's really it. Mm -hmm. I really do wish that more devs would make uh, high quality content creation tools for their games, use them internally, like fully cook them and then release them to the people who are actually interested in making content for these games. Because... It it yeah. really does extend the life of your game. Look at look at Arma. Look at um, Neverwinter Nights. Mod. Look at all of these uh, mm -hmm. game games. Neverwinter Nights, Never Winter Nights. Elder Scrolls. Yeah. <sighs> uh, ser serious. I used to have one. Um, hell, even even the sort even the Source Engine has a bunch of this stuff. Um, it allows you to create new content, breathes new life into existing properties, and it doesn't cost you anything as a developer. So I'm I'm really interested to see what kind of wacky garbage the community will come up with maybe dungeons you can't actually roll your way out of. And well, it won't be as spooky as this next bit. Uh, Conan, ah, what is best in life? Well, apparently to haunt Linux and Mac <laughs> users. Uh, this is Conarium. Uh, it is a Unreal Engine 4 survival adventure Lovecraftian horror game set supposedly after the HP Lovecraft story, The Mountains of Madness. Um, it is coming to the Linux. They have announced it as of the 5th of February. Um, the version 1.0.0.6 has it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's another UE4 game, which is nice because we're finally starting to see, you know, games made on that engine exported to Linux. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, curi I'm curious if uh, it, uh, I'm taking some bets on uh, whether it'll Vulcan. Um, and also, apparently, you cannot play this game in 4x3. This game irrationally hates it. I mean, Lovecraft thought it was a resolution for uh, miscreants and undesirables, so seems legit. I mean, if you slap Lovecraftian on a game's description on the Steam store, that's going to warrant a second look for me, for sure. But um, I really hope that this is Lovecraftian more in the sense of amnesia and less in the sense of Darkwood. Because if it's more amnesia with the puzzles, uh, the screenshots are very mist-like. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that it is amnesia, and I'm hoping the developers will reply to my email and actually send us some keys. That would be very, very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm totally actually kind of uh, wanting to play this one. I mean, it definitely could be interesting. Uh, Speak us. What, what I'm looking at, man, is every time... Because we're starting to see... A, slightly more than your average uh, trickle with Unreal Engine 4 titles. And I am definitely mm -hmm. looking at each one going, maybe this one doesn't run like ganked up mess and <laughs> it'll, it'll be good. So we can only hope, but that's enough about Lovecraft. No, no it Lovecraft? isn't. Because now we have uh, Lovecraft as the bad guy and Nikola Tesla as the protagonist. Well, sort of bad guy. This is let's, Tesla let's, versus let's, Lovecraft. Let's, let's, be, before let's be real here. Lovecraft is a bad guy. Let, let, let's be real. He was a racist piece of yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> he was, yes. Uh, he wrote some good books, but he was kind of a big old racist. Any, in any case, uh, this is Tesla versus Lovecraft. And uh, big kudos to the developers for sending his keys. Very much appreciate it. Chances are we will probably be throwing chairs at it. What is it? It's a shmup. It's a top-down shmup twin-stick shooter type of thing where you play as Nikola Tesla and you're going against Lovecraft's creations taken, you know, actual form. So it's, I don't know, a shmup? Really? Hey, man, if you say shmup again, you're going to get that yeah. bad size Snickers. Shmup. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'm I'm just shmupping hungry, so you better give me that shmupping. Sh oh, you you just need to bar. shmup the no, shmup um... up. <laughs> shmup the shmup yes. up. So, so basically, <laughs> that, 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 that's the show title. Um, but yeah, this is basically the plot to Atomic Robo and the Shadow Beyond Time. I threw a link to that in the show notes because it's actually a really good story in which uh, Carl Sagan fights Cthulhu monsters with a plasma cannon. Um. <laughs> That, I, I don't need to say any more than that. Uh, but yeah, they sent us some keys. I, 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 I don't know. This when I when I saw the title of this game, it just just screams gimmick. It's like, oh, we got Tesla. People like Tesla. <laughs> People like Lovecraft. We may, may, maybe this will be our Reese's Pieces peanut butter cup. I don't know. It's fan but, fiction. Uh, yeah, thank, thanks um, a bunch for. Uh, I don't think anyone's piece. questioning that. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Um, yeah. Rocket patch, man. Uh, it, it, rocket it, it's not going to Mars, man. Yeah. The, <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're really not. Uh, they released the one for one patch. <laughs> um, they added a new victory crate. Um, season competitive season six has ended. Competitive season seven has begun. So they've done a soft reboot, much like the Star Wars series. Uh, and winning placement matches will end you near your previous session ranking uh, if you've won at least half of them. Um, people are they're still wanting people to do placement matches so that they can rebuild the ladder. And yeah, no, mm -hmm. no real, uh, no real Linux updates. I'm pretty sure at this point they've finalized their Linux branch and they've just not they've just stopped touching it forever now we're not we're, not, we're never gonna okay so at it. what point do we just say fuck it and actually throw some chairs at it it's a tuesday wait, wait, wait we've had that conversation before yeah. two years i mean we, we've, we've talked about this at least in the after show we're, mm -hmm. we're not really going to throw chairs at rocket cars because we already know what we're going to give it it's well, not a that's also a thing it could be a lazy <laughs> lazy acquisition but they've never it never really had a beta period. They're like, yeah, it works on Linux now, guys, but it's mm -hmm. it's not official, even though it was though a bit crashy, right? Oh man, <laughs> oh man, the cascades of nope. But it sure yeah. as hell runs better than this. That's Rust, because <laughs> you know we leave early access with a graphics overhaul, give out a frog boots and those something. I, listen, man, it's Rust. It, this is a uh, proto pub pubga old school and mm -hmm. my one thing it has in common with um the vastly vastly more popular PUBG is it runs like complete ass and uh <laughs> gary decided to take it out it's got a bit of a graphics overhaul i tried it at just 1080p with things on high not crazy it, it's basically tapping 20 ferps man that's all i can do Mm -hmm. in any type of real open no the era. game has always run terabad on linux uh it uh we mentioned it last week it released from early access and into alpha i'm not kidding that's actually something that gary newman said uh he also said that uh, game development will go from a weekly release into a monthly release so if the game is busted for you now i probably grab a chair and uh, sit down while you wait for it to improve because it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, I don't know. That was one of the things I said, like when PUBG and all this started taking off. Um, pay, uh, Face Punch Studios, they they kind of got in gear. Like, oh shit, we better get this thing together while it's hot. And even though they they've said, oh, now we're going to a monthly update cycle. It's like, don't you mean screeching fucking halt release cycle? <laughs> Because, oh, and the price on this thing, too. Now it's like 30 something dollars, man. Mm -hmm. It's the ARC yeah, price. It's not great. I mean, I'm... Yeah, and it's not the ARC quality. I mean, I don't even know what that is. But they have Pepe boots, man. They, they keck when you walk. But yeah, they, they, they added a bunch more shit as well with procedural gen uh, generation because developing levels and, you know, balancing them is hard work. Nobody wants to do it. Um, yeah, the, the 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 whole the whole Rust thing though really feels like it should have been abandoned. I guess like it, it's going to be like one of those zoonotic things, right? Where it's going to have its really core diehard fan base, and if you want to get into Rust, you're not going to be able to do it anymore because everyone playing it, all they do is play Rust. Well, I think all Rust fair. at that's, some uh, point. That, that's uh, my hot take. Rust really did uh, come out at just the right time because it was at the time that Daisy, the mod, wasn't really being actively developed anymore, mm -hmm. and the uh, the standalone version was kind of dwindling down, even though they never actually admitted it that they'd just given up on it. Uh, so Rust came out, and it's like, oh look, survival and crafting and things. So I think it came out at just the right time. I don't think anyone's left playing it now that there's other options to play well but, i mean it came out yeah, at the right ever, time ever, and it ever, had everyone's the on that, uh, correct right amount now. of caveman dicks in it so <laughs> yeah yes that, 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 that was what got people argument. invested yes. was the, the the dick physics are key to any game's success I, i'm Pro saying devs, people showed up penises, people will love it they showed up for the rock stayed for the caveman dick and Mm -hmm. that's basically where we were at Bro. so 
Uh, before we get out of here, we get... Uh, ben, Banks is just rock hard camp men. Two... We, we got some new games. New <laughs> games showing up on Steam. Come on. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we we do. We got we got the, this first one. It's called Attack of the Earthlings. And it's essentially reverse Starship Troopers. Humans come to colonize your planet and you get to play the bug people who murder them. It is a turn-based stealth strategy game similar in uh, execution Great to X, Shadowrun God. Returns based on the screenshots. <laughs> yep. Well, Shadowrun Returns <laughs> also had a higher stealth thing. Whatever. Doesn't matter. With aliens. Um, I mean, it's Shadowrun Return uh, with aliens. It's XCOM. Come on. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I maintain that you're full of shit, Pedro. Um, but, <laughs> but anyways, uh, they, uh, they, they're uh, releasing. It's a bit pricey. What with it being close to 30 Canadian dollars. Uh, but they had a pro Z or pro Z. Uh, he's the, that vine guy with the, he's the dumpy looking Asian guy with the really deep, sexy voice. Um, he's doing the cave Johnson in this. So that's kind of neat. I like his stuff. Um, so that, that was more than enough to get me to turn an eye towards this, whether or not this is actually gonna be fun. Don't know. Maybe they'll send us some keys. See if it's actually worth $30. Um, the system requirements uh, are relatively modest, so you're not going to be breaking the bank. You will need something that can push some pixels, but that's not too much to ask. Pretty cool. But, I'm definitely uh, digging know, that. I remember way back it? when, um, Jordan, we, we were looking at VR headsets and dirt bike game, games, and that combination should have came sooner. And there, there, it looks like there's a chance, man. There, there's a chance we might, might be able to get that on Linux. <laughs> there may be Sanders. a chance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't currently support VR, but uh, it's Descenders. Uh, it is a mountain biking game. Uh, it's done in Unity, and it looks very, very good. It actually doesn't look bad at all. Um uh, and if the trailer actually translates into actual gameplay, that looks like it won't be terrible. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one coming out of early access because it is in early access right now, which is disappointing. But hey, maybe they just want a couple of months to work on it. Hopefully, that's what I'm going for here. Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it does look really, really good. Yeah, it's supposed to be a procedurally generated sort of endless runner with bike stunts, which I guess is a thing if you're if you're into that. Uh, like like Ben said, though, mm -hmm. I, I want like the the VR version that you that puts you on like an actual bike, <laughs> and then has the disconnect between what you're seeing on screen and what you're actually biking, so that you just <laughs> slam into a wall. Oh fuck yeah! I want like you know a good three quarters of a second delay, and I want the handlebars to be that reverse gear handlebar that goes the opposite way. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> inverted <laughs> controls or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Just, just just make it like straight up fucking hard boot. Yeah, it is. It's a bit pricey, man. You're looking at over twenty bucks for an early access. Mm -hmm. uh, is it multiplayer, Pedro? Uh, it, they say it's single player. Mm -hmm. Uh, for now, in early access, it's just single player. Uh, it's one of the things that people keep bringing up in the uh, discussions. Uh, is uh, can we have multiplayer? And they say that they will look into it. Well, they so better probably, fucking look uh, into it because they're not. I, gonna, I mean, yeah. it, it, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really seem like it's a game well suited to multiplayer, aside from like people sort of piggybacking along and laughing at you slamming into trees. Mm. So maybe, maybe a spectator mode or something. <laughs> Possibly. Anyways, that, I think that <laughs> about wraps up our uh, our Steam news segment. Oh God, we got we got more of this shit coming down the pipe, slowly crawling and blockingly. Coming up next, we got some RPS C3 stuff and an interview with Gog's Linux guy. Well, 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 wouldn't you know it? It's about time we started chilling ourselves out to you, go figure. Because for some reason, you lot seem to like what we're doing. I don't know why. I, I, I really don't. But hey. Thank you very much. It's because of you that we get to do all those weekly streams and Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. So, hey, thank you. Get, get or have. 
Yes. I don't. I don't know. But yes. anyways, we got we got, we got to thank the lovely people who uh, give us money because they make very poor financial decisions that financially benefit us. So we got to give them the big old thumbs up. You can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click the support button. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got Humble affiliate links. We got New Egg affiliate links. We got affiliate links at the Wazoo. We got an Amazon wish list that Ven will tell you about in a little little bit. And we got lovely, lovely bitcoins for people who love internet money. Look at that penguin making it rain, man. He's so fat. He's so rich. Man, I wish I had that stack of bills. But you, oh, you yeah. can help us build our own by heading on by heading on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Oh, man. We, we got some good stuff coming up. Uh, we got an audio-only stream for uh, we uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, that Wednesday show. We have that as a goal. Um we're and we're uh, twenty one dollars away from that. And Amir, Mir, not Mir, the guy in chat realm, but <laughs> the, a small amount, forty six dollars away from having Jill from Lex Chicks on weekly daily Wednesday. That will be huge. There'll be so much giggling. Then we'll start giggling as well. It'll drive him insane. It's like the Joker gas. But we got some some lovely humans. We got to thank <laughs> for giving us money. Sharon, Zoe, Jack, Eric, Todd are all brand new people who are throwing money in our direction. Thank you very much. And our Theron and Frenchie have up their donations. So thank you a whole <laughs> whack for that. Uh, we literally could not do this without you. Our hosting costs are through the roof because apparently you love us so much that you want to kill us financially anyways. <laughs> but, uh, but then um, what, what, what is our favorite uh, non skeletor skeleton have to say about the hardware donations? Hardware donations, hey man. I mean, if you if you want to throw it in, you end up on Frank's fine upstanding cannibal wall, so we can enable cheat mode, if you will, for the studio. And we are always in desperate need of that help. But we want to thank everyone who is there: Bradley, Jill, Maddie, Erod, Michael, John, Mister Red, Lennox, Nuru, Clockia, Stevo, uh, Admiral JT, Truggy, Mir, Lutris, that's Frenchie, Nmag, Dan, WJ, and. Mm. from last week Julio, you're brilliant thank you so much there's some definite stuff on there it looks like i'm going to be buying that um new router sooner than later but hey <laughs> thanks again for everyone mm. helping us out so let's get into it man uh some of our new favorite psychopaths are the guys working on the mm -hmm. ps3 emulator yeah they, they got themselves a january 2018 update it's not as exciting as some of the previous updates but progress is being made nonetheless. Nothing new really is, or nothing really interesting is being added in the supported games department. Um, they got some stuff for Midnight Club LA, Virtua Fighter 5, Wangen Midnight. <laughs> Wangen. <laughs> um, some baseball games, uh, uh, some pachinko game, and pa Castlevania Lord of Shadows. Um, the big thing comes from a lot of quality of life updates. Um, they have uh, support for multiple controller profiles on the same device. So what you can do is if you uh, don't have dual shock controllers, but you still want to get that couch multiplayer experience and also want to get physically uncomfortably close to the person you're playing with, you can, you can do the uh, NCIS thing and play with two people typing on the <laughs> same keyboard. Oh God, that's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Open GL performance issues. Were Why would you ever thing. want to fix that? <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Look at it. I love his arm just like flopping around like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's so good um <laughs> but anyways they apparently had an issue with um or rather the nvidia open gel driver has some performance issues when you do uh index offsets and heap buffers uh they've done some rework on that which creates um a significant performance improvement on OpenGL for nvidia so that's pretty good it's nice that they're supporting both OpenGL and the vulcans making sure that anyone can do the PlayStation 3 emulation if they're sufficiently good. Yeah, I'm actually uh, hoping this will fix the uh, Demon's Souls uh, issue I was having because it, there's some really bad frame rate rubber banding happening with that game. And it's really annoying, so maybe now it's fixed. I'll uh, have to give the new version a download over this week. See how it works. Indeed. Always good to see that work continuing at such a breakneck pace, man. It is... Surreal. So, good old games. You know them, you love them. Maybe not so much as you want to love them, I should say, because we're still waiting on that client that, you know, then again, this is GOG. They're like, oh, we're going to start doing Linux releases. And I think it was like 200 years later 
we finally got some Linux releases. But with their their version of Steam, uh, the Galaxy client, and Boiling mm-hmm. Steam, again, all this business in our show notes, uh, went over, talked to them, and asked some pretty, pretty realistic, not realistic, what's the word I'm looking for? Poignant. Poignant. I'll work with that. Um, questions about this is their Linux guy, their Linux human that takes care of that. And apparently there's some type of team, but uh, I read through it and it's like, all right, really all I will say from this at the end of the day is uh, I'm going to continue to use GOG for what I've used GOG for since Genesis guys. And that is for asset files for open source engines or anything like that. And I, I know I've said on the show I would throw a lot more money. Uh, ping one rain, man. Ping one rain. If there was a client, because, you know, until they poop that thing out, I'm going to use Steam. Steam's going to get most of my money because I'm done with having a games folder on my desktop and, or hanging out anywhere. Uh, Peng- Penguin Rain is totally the less popular sequel to Heavy Rain. David Cage has some weird aquatic bird fetish. Anyways, so uh, there, there's some there's some neat stuff in the uh, in the interview itself. So um, a couple of the points I pulled out from that was they say Galaxy is in the big picture, meaning that don't hold your breath. Uh, it's it, it, it'll it'll get there when it gets there. If it ever gets there, just keep using keep using Lutris. That will solve your problems for you and fix a lot of the compatibility issues. One thing I do like about their process is that they're fairly adamant about fixing upstream bugs with um, the games that they're selling on their store. So they uh, tend to not use workarounds um, such as Steam Runtime and actually want um, more generic binary fixes and library references in the game so that they can just work out of the box on the Ubuntu's and the Debian's and so on. But the added benefit that if you're... um, with some creative symbolic linking, you could probably get stuff working on um, any other distribution you want. They do need some better way of handling dependency resolution, though, because they just list it out on the store page. And you can't mm-hmm. ask people to read things. No one actually reads things <laughs> anymore. Um, there, 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 there's, there's some talk about um, there, there's some talk about CD Projekt Red and the relationship to Good Old Games. Apparently, they are co-located in the same physical building, but they are siloed. So. Despite uh, Godall Games talking all that good shit about Linux support and wanting to support other operating systems, you're just not getting that Witcher 3 port, Brad. You're, you're, just, you're just not. Yeah, like Jordan already mentioned, the uh, the Galaxy client, they actually ask about it. And the reply was, while currently GOG isn't developing the Linux client, it still remains in the big picture and is planned to be done eventually. We are not working on it right now, and it won't happen anytime soon. Gotcha. So Steam stranglehold on the uh, Linux game client continues unchecked. Uh, they also ask him a question about the um, about why game if they have more than just the Linux version. Uh, let's say you try to put your game out on GOG and you have a Windows version, the Linux version, the Mac version. Uh, the Windows version will show up right then and there. The Linux version will take a while. Now, the what Jordan said, he, all, uh, he does actually mention uh, that in a couple of the other replies, but when asked this question directly, he dodged it so much and shifted the narrative, uh, just shifted the narrative to the fact that Linux is still has a very small adoption in the desktop market and not everyone is familiar with it. Well, fuck you. Really? <laughs> that, that's definitely a thing, man. Uh, give me that client. That's all I care about. Uh, I have nothing against GOG, but yeah, it's a very limited use currently. So, fishy, raw, salmon, and engines. What do they have in common? Uh, well, they uh, have uh, the raw salmon engine, I guess. <laughs> uh, it is... It's an engine that was, uh, according to developers, originally meant to be the foundation of a game in between Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, and Divine Divinity. Interesting combination. They are all basically the same game, but whatever. Uh, (laughs) The current state of the project, as they say, can only do like basic map renderer for TMX files. Uh, It is an SDL2-based engine, so that's good. 
Uh, in the uh, dependencies bit, they say you need SDL2 and touch the salmon. Now, they really don't mention the bear that you're most likely to find when you're trying to touch salmon, uh, and not the sexy kind of bear either, so they need to change that. That, that I don't, I don't know, man. I, t- I, touched, I touched a lot of salmon today, and I didn't have any issues, but I was at a sashimi place. Yeah, uh, we've, <laughs> talked about tiled, uh, we've talked about tiled a few times on the show. Basically, what it is is a 2D isometric or just regular two, orthogonal map editor. Uh, so like Pedro said, what they're trying to do is create a game engine that would use, um, the tiled maps, just be a raw tiled interpreter and allow you to place assets and add logic. So at the moment, you can basically just use it as a tiled map viewer. Uh, the game that they were planning to make though, involves anthropomorphic cats, which always, whenever, whenever I see that, I go, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, rightfully so, because you more never tools really... to enable. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, I'm, go ahead. I'm all I'm all for having more tools to create RPGs, and you know, I, I like isometric sorts. We're playing Divinity on uh, Thursdays now with Sandy. Uh, we're playing Tyranny. Those all of those games have that isometric stuff in common because I really like it. So some fancy, fancy, happy new open source tools uh, that hopefully people will use. Hmm? But speaking of open source engines. Uh, I, oh, yes. I, I feel we need to start. We did we build the city on rock and roll? No, we built it on. So yeah. actually, no, you they, they built it on Node.js. Fuck. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. Uh, are you that person that is just so hooked on SimCity 2000 that you need to be able to play it anywhere and everywhere, regardless of whichever device you want? Well, here it is. It is a Node.js, like Jordan mentioned, uh, built uh, open source reimplementation. Of SimCity 2000. Uh, uh, okay. Um, SimCity 2000 is definitely at this point one of those cult uh, following type of games. Does it really justify a re implementation in Node freaking JS? <laughs> no. The answer is no. Nothing deserves any sort of implementation in Node JS. JavaScript developers, please stop trying to be back end people. And just focus on front end or learn like an actual language, like Python, C, Ruby, Java, even. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I might be just a little salty about Node.js because I've had to deal with a bunch of Node dependency issues at work. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's definitely a thing. It can it can at the moment it can read the old SimCity save files, and you can uh, they're, they're still working on implementing Zoom and other features like that. Still, and it's fairly uh, early um, development. Mm-hmm. But the one nice thing is that you can play it in a browser, which means that we don't have to worry about any, oh, supporting Linux is hard, because you just point out a freaking web page and play your game. Right on. Uh, speaking of playing games, man, uh, it's Yeti. Booga booga. Google's Yeti is reportedly a gaming hardware streaming service boost. And, um, well, my first and only thought well, a couple of thoughts, but my main one is, what is this on live? Take what? Like number three, how many times and how many companies are going to attempt this shit and realize that the tech's not necessarily there? I don't, I mean, I don't see this taking off with things like we were talking about last week and that was Unreal Engine 4 in the browser. That's a legitimate thing that is there. I personally don't think game streaming is going to become a thing. And now mind you, it will eventually become... Like the majority, that's how most people will game. But I don't think it's going to work as how everyone has tried and failed so far as making it a subscription. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. I think it should be like an added extra. Like if you buy a Blu-ray, you get the um, digital copy. I think if you buy a game, you should be able to stream it as well, as opposed to paying a subscription for something that you genuinely don't own. I don't I honestly think I don't know because so, uh, so here, here, here's the thing. Go ahead, Jordan. Go on, Pedro. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll go before you talk over me again. Uh, like I like I was saying, um, a lot of these services are aimed at people who don't necessarily have the hardware for playing games, and so the idea is you have super powerful cloud servers with lots and lots of GPU power that can stream the game. The problem with this, and the problem will always be that residential internet in North America, at least in Europe, it's a little different, is garbage, hot, steamy garbage, because there's no uh, regional competition. There's nothing but like 
inter cross regional competition in terms of internet service providers. So people will get slow speeds and this will always just provide a very, very bad experience. You're going to need stuff like Google, Google fiber rolled out to enough people to actually make this stuff playable. And that, and the lack of infrastructure investment in that solution will forever hamper game streaming uh, services period. Hmm. Yeah. And going by Google's previous efforts, this shit's going to be so region locked, it's not even going to be fun. I mean, Google is the company that in 2018 is still fucking region locking fucking podcasts. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Um, you got to switch, Jordan, and it looks like eventually you might be able to run Linux on it. Uh, that's the thing. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is from uh, Fail Overflow, the same guys who were throwing uh, the Linux on the PlayStation 3. They got um, they got a crack going. Uh, they say that this is something that Nintendo cannot patch, which makes me believe that there is some sort of remote JTAG something or other enabled in Tegra that these guys can just hook into to inject their bootloader. It's definitely a possible thing. Whatever it is, we're going to have to wait for the release to see. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't really see there being much of an advantage of running Linux on the switch, but with, uh, the hardware not being quite there, except for like games that are specifically developed for the switch runtime, which is, I mean, let's be real, just BSD and Vulcan, but whatever the fact, the fact, the fact remains that they're targeted at a specific API level that running Linux on this will probably not support still. It's neat. Uh, it might be useful to, uh, turn your switch into a little, Itty bitty conversion device that you can use to um, I don't know, browse the web and then hook it up to a TV and do some other stuff. Yeah, this is just um, neat. Um, it's kind of a neat thing. And you know, Linux, Homebrew, and Nintendo are very synonymous, man. I mean, for a long time. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, pe- people but are getting the thing uh, here is... on the old Nintendo DSs. If you want to run Linux on an NVIDIA Tre- Tegra device, how about Tregra. you get yourself a Shield tablet? Yes, a Tegra device. Uh, <laughs> Drop it. Get a Come Shield on, tablet. It. it may or may not explode, but uh, yeah, it works. You can run Linux on it. Uh, there was a guy, I can't remember his name. I think he's HR Luck on Twitter. Um, he got Ubuntu running about as well as you can expect. Most of everything was working. There was just an issue with the camera, but then again, the camera is an issue even with the official Lineage OS ROM on it. So eh, maybe this turning a switch into a Linux machine isn't exactly ideal at this Mm, point. I don't know. Play around with it. See what's going on. Quick mention before we get out of here is a reminder that OpenRW, it is a faithful rendition of the classic action PG, PC game for family and kids, Grand Theft Auto 3, um, under the new GPL3 license. It's got a couple of updates recently. Um, still needs a ton of work, but it does compile under Linux, and that's mm-hmm. a good thing. I tried it out. It works. And the main reason I'm bringing this up right now is currently there is a Rockstar bundle on Humble. If you hurry, you can get the original assets for a buck. And that's probably worth doing because, you know, this is moving at more of a glacier pace versus <laughs> things like Open Morrowind. But hey, mm-hmm. hey, give it a try. Yeah, it's still missing some stuff uh, going by the screenshots and the uh, progress report. There's still. There's still no quests, no NPCs, none of the uh, progression, basically. Uh, So it's still just a very barren city that you can walk around in. Uh, We talked about it a while back. I, at the time, got it running and it didn't have any shaders at all. (laughs) And the cutscenes would actually break the game because after a cutscene, it would just be stuck there. Uh... So, yeah, I know I'm actually uh, absolutely looking forward to them getting this working on Linux because I liked GTA 3 back in the day. So I'm down for playing it again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, GTA, GTA 3 was one of those big uh, game changers that uh, really kind of changed how people viewed games and what they could do, mm-hmm. uh, especially very early in the lifespan of the PlayStation 2. One thing I'm looking forward to is if they can get it working, the multiplayer, because then you can do like a meet the Freemans with Claude and that would just be extra fucky. <laughs> 
But coming up next, talking about fucky, we're going to talk about, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't have a fun little transition for this. We're, we're throwing chairs at power. You're right. a clod. A magical Mexican melee? No, this has nothing to do with melee. It's all shooting. Uh, this is Power Umi. It's from Manufacturer 43. It's developed on the Unity engine. And you can get it for around 15 of your local particular currency. What is it? Power Umi is a modern shoot 'em up set in a retro futuristic sci fi pre Columbian universe. You take control of the Al Mehdi ship Chukaru and its three unique weapons. Shoot wisely to either do double damage, heal yourself, or charge your super attack. This is a chair QA edition. This is where we uh, take some games. Sometimes the uh, developers send them to us. Sometimes uh, the Sildad just says, hey, here's a game. Play it. And uh, that's, that's what happened this week. We uh, take a look at it. We talk about it. We do a little quality assurance that maybe the uh, developer should have done in the first place. Ah, oh, look at that Mexican anime. It's so good. <laughs> um, we, 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 we rate them uh, on the chair acquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meth. Three chairs means it's pretty good. Four chairs means it's awesome. And we apply these to our categories. Oh, doom makes with the working shiny sounds, controls and fun. I like this Bruce Payne looking motherfucker. Man, he, he he totally looks like the 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 villain from Highlander Endgame. I, I, I don't know, man. So uh, let's let's yeah. You, you, let's you remember that? Movie? Let's go ahead and cut through this with yeah, a quickness dude, before it gets the working. Old. Right, I want to tell you over here yeah. the Kumbuntu seventeen ten Ryzen seven seventeen. Well, Ryzen seventeen hundred, I guess. Uh, yeah, Ryzen seven. Anyway, uh, nine eighty powered UHD display box business. No issues. Now, early access, you know, we're talking like less than a month ago. This game had some genuine issues with UHD displays. Happy to say, completely gone. Couldn't make it do anything weird and or crazy. Solid for. Yeah, uh, on Fedora 26, uh, 64-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 980. Uh, runs pretty well. No real issues. No compatibility stuff whatsoever. I'll give it a solid four. Yeah, and over here on Ubuntu 1604 with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it ran with absolutely no issues. In fact, the moment I turned off VSync, it was hitting like 300-ish FERPs, so four chairs. All right. All right, that's four chairs for Mix with the working. Up next is the shiny and the sounds. Yeah, I really, I really kind of like the visual style of this, especially with like the uh, sort of still comic cutscenes. I wish um, they would do a little more show and less tell when it comes to some of the exposition. But <laughs> what can you expect from a shoot 'em up? Um, all the particle effects look good. Uh, sometimes you can get a little character blind, but it's usually not too bad. Uh, there's usually enough uh, distinction between the various shapes and flashing lights on the screen that uh, you can not get lost. Uh, like Pedro mentioned, VSync is on by default, but once you uh, cut that off, mm -hmm. it uh, at least on the at least in Intel land, it holds a solid 60 for most of the segments, um, with the occasional dips to the mid 50s. So that's pretty good. I also like the music. Um, they did a decent job. Didn't make me want to mute it and put on some I don't know death or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> what, what about you, Pedro? What'd you think? No, the music was all right. Uh, it wasn't terrible. I didn't feel the need to mute it at all. Uh, the thing about the graphics was temporal AA. It's a bit less effective than other types of AA, but it's also much easier on the resources. And unlike FX AA, it doesn't make everything look blurry. Uh, so I guess my biggest complaint is really the lack of impact that the weapons have. Uh, I can see how devastating they are, but when you unleash the ultimate weapon, it just looks and sounds so miserably inadequate. Ben? Yeah, man, I didn't have any big issues with it whatsoever. I mean, it looks good for shoot 'em up even a, you know, a 2160. Uh, runs pretty respectably at 3840 by 2160. Holds a solid 60 until you get some jungle bits, kind of tanks down to 30. 1080p looks a little blurry after viewing it in that res. Overall, the game looks quite nice. Detailed backdrops almost to a fault. They do get a little bit busy sometimes. No sound for me, only silence, because that's the only way I can enter not my fugue state, but my pew state. <laughs> uh, say solid three, kind of digging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, three shares across the board for Shining the Sound, so that's that's what it gets, three shares. Yeah. 
How about the controls, Pedro, Mr. Control Stickler? Actually, I am a bit of a control stickler. This game, on the other hand, I really didn't have an issue with it. Uh, I did sort of kind of miss the mouse controls. I'm not saying that you had to bind everything to the mouse. Not everyone has a 10-button mouse. But at least letting you move around with the mouse wouldn't have gone amiss. That would have been something I would have very much appreciated. But the controls, as they are, they work. I really had no issues with it. I guess I could throw, give it three chairs, only one short because of the lack of the mouse support. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I mean, there, there, there's a minor nit I have to pick with it, but nothing real, uh, nothing really bad. Everything's responsive. Um, I hit the buttons and the pew pew starts happening. I move the uh, joystick on the guy moves at about the same rate. So nothing to really complain about over now. That said, uh, they did this uh, mapping thing where the different colors of pew are mapped to the color face colors of the face buttons on the Xbox controller, which is a little counterintuitive if you're on the DualShock like myself. Hmm. Right that's on. That's, uh, that's, that's the wrong side. But yeah, that's it. Steamy detection out of the box. Areola controller, the steam controller, no issues. I like seeing that logically laid out from the get go. This is something you're going to be using the XYZ buttons to match up with different colors and stuff like that. Interesting little mechanic. More about that in the fun. No lag on the input. With the wireless, uh, don't ever use the wired. I actually used the... I never thought I'd be one to regularly use a wireless controller, but thanks to Frenchy, uh, who attempted to punish me with this controller, I kind of almost halfway don't hate it at this point in my life. So, yes, yeah, all three. No complaints, man. Yeah, uh, I, I, I I gave it a four. The rest of you gave it a three. So that averages up to three chairs for the control segment. And to put a bow on it, Ven, did you have fun playing Pawarumi? I kind of had some fun until I had that moment where I was like, holy, I'm done with the game. You know, 80 minutes at the speed of cocking about, boys and girls. Um, yeah, I can't say that's sixteen ninety nine terribly well spent. You got modes. You got easy. It's kind of boring. It's way too easy. Normal mode. Kind of fun, a little challenging. Then you got hard, which is basically just fuck you hard. Not fun at all. Uh, but you're supposed to keep trying because you want to be on the letter boards. I really wanted a third person view because all, all of this business that you're seeing up in your screen organ, that's all full 3D rendered. And I, I, I wanted something like the old uh, Star Fox, Fox Star, with that third person behind the ship type of view, which you get little hints at, you know, during some of the transitions. Uh, let's see. It's... Basically, just a wicked short shooter. Say that nine times fast. Really doesn't bring anything terribly new to the table. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I mean, it's completely well done. They did a great job with the game. But like the rent, that price is way too damn high for something that you can accidentally beat without meaning to. Um, if this goes 90% off, I say give it a look. But I mean, if you want to support the developers, which you should, they did a good job. But there, there needs to be some more game here. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Power Ruby. You're, you're just not my game. Uh, I'm I'm terrible at shmups. I cannot multitask with all the various pew pew bits going on and the... And I mean that that's just that's just a limitation to me. I I gave the game fairly high scores in all the other segments because it's all very well technically done. It's just I can't I have a very hard time enjoying shoot 'em up games. It has to be super compelling for me to even consider playing it for more than an hour. And super compelling this necessarily wasn't. I do like a lot of the gameplay choices though. The uh the juggling between powering up your alts, uh healing yourself, and uh doing a fuck ton of damage to clear the screen presents interesting choices and a different sort of strategy you can take depending on where you are in the game or if you're constantly fucking up and getting hit by little purple balls like me. Um, it's definitely pretty looking. Uh, it definitely controls really, really tightly. It's a well done, competent shooter that I just can't enjoy for the sake of I'm genetically predisposed to hating shoot 'em ups. Mm. Uh, if you like, if you do like shoot 'em ups, um, maybe wait for this to go on sale. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I got to give it one chair just because, it's, again, it's not my game. No, no, no fault of the game itself. I, it's personal preference. Honestly, I didn't hate it. Uh, it's not really stupidly hard like most shmups nowadays uh, feel like they have to be. 
Uh, it's um, even with all the colors and everything else that's happening on screen, and there's a lot happening on screen at any given point. It's uh, I never really lost track of my ship. I always knew where I was and where I had to move in order to dodge the little purple bullets. But it didn't really change my opinion when it came when it comes to um, shmups. Uh, Demon Star still holds a special place in the derelict, unused wastes of my brain. Uh, I don't know what it is about Power Rumi, if it's the lack of impact to shooting or getting shot, uh, the feel like that of taking a piss and, you know, on wet grass from the ultimate weapon, uh, or apparently the fact that it's pretty short. Uh, I really couldn't be asked to try and get to the end because it just didn't grab me. I, to, I can give it two chairs for the fun because I can recognize that it is a very well done game it's just not my kind of game <laughs> it seems to be a recurring theme here so that's one chair for the fun segment but it totals out to a two chair game list strider so uh that was power Rumi. uh do we get any final thoughts before we close this sucker off um not a bad game uh well done uh too mm -hmm. expensive and I, I don't have a problem making it rain but not not for barely an hour of fucking around and like, whoa, shit, I'm out of game. So there's that. Yeah. Let's, and it does I mean, that yeah, thing it's well done. with the... You, um... Go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's well done. It just won't change your mind about shmups. That's, that's basically it. If you don't like shmups, you won't like this game. If you like shmups, you might like this game. Yeah. The big thing about it for me was it doesn't really have like a level system. It actually goes old school with the shmups, which is you always start from the beginning and you see just how far you can get. And then you put your uh, high score on the board and you try to basically beat yourself. Giggity. Giggity. Uh, <laughs> but it isn't uh, it isn't really it isn't really a game changer, so to speak, when it comes to shmups. It is not bad. But it's not amazing either. Yeah. You, by, by the way, uh, you can go and practice levels that you've unlocked. So you don't have to. So if you actually want to advance, you have to beat the levels in order in the campaign mode. But if mm -hmm. you're just stuck on a part, you can practice it. Anyways, uh, that's Chair Acquisition. Tune in next week when we throw chairs at some other game. Coming up next, we get into a nerd fight about controllers. It's going to be fun. Well, if you put up with us this long, I commend you. I will commend you till the end of my days, till I'm a rotten, dying husk somewhere, and I'll still be going, you rock. Well, you don't rock, because I keep asking you guys and gals to send us some hate mail, some proper hate mail. Show how much you hate what we do, just how wrong we are, just how basically anything that you can find to pick the nits at us I, I i like that i like arguing on the internet it, that's my thing but hey if you'd like to feel my um particular brand of uh internet arguments you can go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button you fill out the form make sure lgc weekly is the thing that you pick on the drop downy box uh, no, 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 I won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, if you'd like to send us, uh, I don't know, some keys for some games, make sure to include three, just pick the, uh, relative, uh, the relative, no, 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 the appropriate, uh, thing on the drop downy box. If you'd like Jordan to give you some relationship advice, you can do that too. There's a, an option for that. <laughs> All right, coming up first, man. All right, uh, well, we are one hundred percent getting right into it with some control advice. Goldstar writes in, and he's like, "Hey, man, I just graduated from casual gaming on a laptop to building myself a modest, mm, modesty, gaming rig. I'd like your opinions on which controller offers best ease of use slash compatibility. I have dabbed, dabbled." With an Xbox before, but oh man, it's all teeth and nails. This doesn't necessarily make this controller the de facto choice. Thoughts, question mark, hashtag, why don't you get the Duke? Uh, I mean, <laughs> really, really I, my, my, my piece of advice is not too far off. Like, honestly, Steam Controller is great and all, 
Um, certain games, specifically those that have an emphasis on third person over the shoulder, do not particularly work well with the Steam controller in my experience. I find the it to be very, very odd. So in terms of just raw compatibility with the most things, your best bet is still the good old fashioned vanilla Xbox 360 controller that will get you through pretty much everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to have to agree with you uh, for the most part, and that pains me horribly. Um, my exclude controller, which was just the 360, it got shit done, 100%. No complaints with it. Uh, I've since just been forcing myself to, since we have a segment called Steam Day of the Week, and we play most of our games through Steam, using the Steam controller, the Areola controller, the last few months, and without any issues. But I will say it is a bit fucky it's a bit finicky it's a bit fidgety not in the hardware itself but getting it configured and customized you might say it's over customizable almost to a fault but i like shit with known issues jordan dynafier <laughs> now if you want compatibility and you don't exactly want to rely on steam or like the sc controller uh driver or anything else any other third-party tools yeah, the Xbox 360 or the Logitech, if you don't want to give uh, Microsoft money, the Logitech F310 for the wired version or the 710 for the wireless version would be my suggestion. Uh, if basically all the games you're playing on Steam, then yeah, the Steam controller is pretty good. Mm. I like it. Thanks for that, Lockdown. <laughs> right on. What do we got up next, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Up up next, uh, we got a question about Earth's, Earth's feeds from Mr. Evo. He says, I'm using Podcatcher on my Sailfish OS device, but your audio podcasts are not working. Every other podcast is working. I'm not sure if I can provide a log, but I would try after request. Only one error pop up. Failed to download podcast. Yeah, accidentally the whole thing meant I wanted to bring this up simply because motherfuckers running Sailfish OS and it's like that's that, that that's metal i i wear that as a badge of pride right there it's like we, we found the guy we found the guy who's running sailfish os it's like this is legit um we part two part two of the story is I, I just wanted to give him props because um yeah ivo didn't blow us up man he was like yo uh, I was like, check this out does this work try this and it's like, wait a minute. Oh, it's this podcast app that I'm using on Selfish OS that hasn't been updated in two years. That's not parsing the RSS feed correctly. So he sends me a link. He's like, look, I filed a bug report on their GitHub page. And just to you, sir. Thank you. That That's so much better than like going after a, which we've had people. It's like, what was it? The um, Cody, pl was it Cody plugin? Yeah, yeah, our, our artificial <laughs> Cody plugin. Yeah, that we had nothing to do with, and um, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice not to get blown up for stuff that is just not in your control. Uh, I say good on that, uh, and good on for running Sailfish OS. It's that's that that's kind of metal. Someone that. had to, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that's right up there with running Android X eighty six. Admittedly, my uh, old uh, Toshiba netbook with the C30 APU is running Android X86. Hey, man, there's a, <laughs> earlier this month, a new version of um, X86 Android came out. Yeah, 7.1. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you hate yourself. Why you why, why you'd want to run <laughs> yeah, X, X86 Android? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe if you just really, really like pain. So uh, I, I like pain. How about you? Hey, man, we love pain. That's why we come back each and every week. It is beautiful. And uh, I definitely got to say, uh, it's probably bombshell worthy and enough to cue the music. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time where everything's always on fire, at least for the past two weeks. But hey, we learned something this evening, and that's... Uh, God damn, cable modem is going to be expensive, son. So join us on patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get some cool shit and, uh, so we don't go completely broke. Uh, right. Oh, you can find me at Vinstone. Yeah, uh, I'm... No, da, da, da. <laughs> you, you can find me at Vinstone. No. 
Uh, you can find me, Jordan Spung, at The Burning Pool on Twitter, or plus Jordan Spung on Google+, Plus, messing up my order of things and usually giving pithy remarks and retweeting garbage. And then there's this asshole. Mm-hmm. Yes, me. Uh, if you've been following me on Google+, Plus, you will have seen some Neverwinter Nights stuff. Yeah, the Enhanced Edition is coming along. I may or may not have already bought it. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, you can also get us a free Steam key. Just uh, if you go to their Discord, wait 10 minutes, send the bot a message, you'll get a key. It will go away after uh, the uh, beta is over, but hey, it's free. So me, on the other hand, you can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. Plus. All right, Jordan, what did we learn before we roll the credits? Let me know. All right, rolling Nothing. credits. <laughs> <laughs> Before we roll the credits, crickets. Ah, uh, followed by crickets. Lovely. <laughs> All the crickets. Uh, I'm just waiting for the names to start showing up. Are you not getting returned? See, every, every t- Bring the penguin. I'm. I'm. I'm- I, I'm 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 running out of like uh, like crappy theme yes. sci-fi theme songs to like crappily rendish and I don't know <laughs> what, what, what about Farscape? Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, uh, now see in my head what started playing was that. Um, that flute version of the well not flute recorder version of the um, Jurassic Park one mm-hmm. a really bad cover <laughs> that, that, that's usually what I'm trying to go for it's just like really really bad oh, oh sweetheart you, you nail it I know I, like, like, like uh, Dolly Parton says it takes a lot of effort to look this cheap five dudes not really <laughs>